and welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I got to pay uh, better attention to that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. You did good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you much. We're so glad you tuned in today. The Messages of Inspiration and Hope is proudly brought to you by the good guys at the 6 Today, our guest is Joel B. Peterson. And just wait till you hear some of the great information he's going to share with you about yeah. topics that we don't like to talk about. Suicide, PTSD, not only just from, you know, military, but doctors. And the list just goes on and on and on. As you can see, I'm joined today by the lovely lady who also hosts the Everyday People Show on Friday on this same station, same time. Uh, Tamara yeah. Blankenship, she's more fondly known around here as Miss Giggles. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> say hello to Giggles. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you, Jim. Always lovely to spend time with you. Same here, young lady. Same here. Because we're family. We go back a long Absolutely. ways. And it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing when friends come together and, and we do such Absolutely. wonderful things. And I'm yeah. excited about what we're doing here at E3CV and all the things that's coming to us. I love it. Like we talked about last, well, last Friday, getting an opportunity right. to help some more with the becoming, bringing the awareness around some of these tragic issues that are going on around in our or society. Oh, yeah. It's pretty intense. It, 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 actually, another, exactly. another great day. Today's another one yeah. of those great days. <laughs> yeah, it really is because a lot of times, you know, a lot of shows, they want to sweep stuff under the carpet and pretend that things like that don't go on. And yeah. we're going to have the, um, we had uh, Mana Dab Holkar. <laughs> I think I did it right. That <laughs> Mana Dab Holkar. You got yes. it. <laughs> yeah. She's been practicing that, trust me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a tongue tire for sure. She's yeah. amazingly impactful. Mm. She's doing a lot with helping save people who are being abducted and, and misused and abused. So yes. amazing if you get a chance to see that show last Friday. It was powerful. And, and today, bringing Joe on to talk more about some of these things that are going on in our society. You'd be mm. surprised who's dealing with some of these intense issues. I don't know. Should we tell them what we're going to talk about today? We'll just let Joel open the gate and because, okay. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are hurting on the inside. Many times you don't know why. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's really, um, it, it, we really need to be more observant and respect, respectful of people, you know, how we treat them and how we affect them, what we say, you know, I'm guilty of that, you know, me and my, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'd probably be better off if I stitch half my big mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I try you're not. good. Oh, okay. But you know, sometimes <laughs> when you say something, you may say it short and it may rub someone the wrong way or hurt their feelings. And you know, that's, it's really I've interesting that. you're bringing that, you're bringing that up is so interesting. I just learned at work the other day that, um, I guess I, you know how you repeat things over and over again, you may start to get more assertive in your tone, right? You'll be more like, no, this is what I'm trying <laughs> to say. Right. Mm -hmm. You think you're just trying to be more clear, right, but actually right. the tone is misinterpreted. So you're right. A lot of the times yeah. we we're trying to be more transparent or more, mm. you know, but it's our impatience that's being felt versus our oh, sincerity. Yeah. So I, mean, I, can recall recently, I, can, I can recall recently I was tired and uh, I responded to a comment and just three simple words, you know, and it was taken the wrong way. You know, yeah. much different. But you know, when you're tired, you may, you're going to, yeah. you, you know, when you're running low on energy, you're not going to be firing on all eight cylinders and, you know, doggone it. It's something that you really, that, that you hate to happen. And when it comes to the, the folks who have suffered from PTSD, and mm. I can also speak about suicide because we've had that in our family. Same here. That is a horrible thing to go through. Yes. Because number one, when people do come over, to show that they, you know, they're, they love you and they're sorry and happened and all that. They don't know what to say. No, no. Everybody sits around real quiet and they're almost like they're afraid they're going to say something wrong. Yeah. And inwardly, I guess they know that you're going through that guilt thing about why didn't I see this coming? Yeah. Yeah. And I, this was back when I had the other radio show from 2006, 2014 in and Mark called me, and I was about 10 minutes from going live. He says, hey, Jim, I'd like to stop by and talk with you. I said, well, right, not, not right now. I mean, I'm getting ready to go live. I mean, this is more important right. in life, right? And i tell you right now, that not only came back and snake bite me, ladies and gentlemen, that 
that haunted me for a long, long, long time. Okay. You know, why didn't I, you know, just open up my, why didn't I say, hey, the radio show is going to be there. We're getting 2 million downloads a month yeah. and take time out for them. But it's the little things like that that just gnaw on you and gnaw on you. And I'm telling you, it, it can make your life miserable. But Joel Peterson is going to open up some eyes today, most importantly for people suffering from PTSD and who have tendencies of suicide. Joel describes himself as the professional patient. He's got skin in the game. Okay. And you're going to, oh, yeah, it was his, his term he came up with. And um, I'm a, I'm, I don't want to steal any more of his thunder, but we got to be right back right after with this brief message. Stay with us. Hi, and welcome to the Messages of Inspiration and Hope show that's proudly sponsored by the 6-Minute Webinar. Today, we have some exciting and very interesting guests, real people just like you and me. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the show. Now, here's Jim. And we're back with you. And ladies and gentlemen, I tell you right now, we're, we're so thankful that Charlene does our commercials with us. She's also an honorary host here like uh, Tamara is here on the E360 TV network. And I'm just blessed to have these lovely ladies who are just brilliant in being co-host and uh, because they bring intelligence and they bring insight that I don't have. And I forget, what was it you said that I brought to the uh, TV show? I forget, yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll get, <laughs> you, you can slip me a note later. You can see the sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. It's over that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but let's welcome a good friend of ours to the show, Joel Peterson. We've known him for many, many years. And um, he said he didn't have time to shave today, but that's okay. We're going to let him on the show anyway. <laughs> hey, Joel, how you doing, my man? Hi, Jim. Hi, Tamara. I'm honored Hi. to be here. Thank you so yeah. much. We had you. We had the honor of having you on the um, t on the radio show on Friday. And our radio show is Your Future Is Now. We're on all the major podcasts there. We got over 6 million downloads. And I did not realize all the things that you've been involved with because, uh, if, you know, you're we're, we're associated, we're part of the, you know, scale pathway and all, we're members and all that. But I had flat dab, kind of like lost tracky because I've been busy doing my own thing. And Tamara, I tell you what, <laughs> I had to fasten my seatbelt on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Lots changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a response from Gordon Brown. He says, uh, suicide is like no other death for the family and friends. The wound never heals. You're right about that, Gordon. Yeah. You're, you're so yeah. right. Thank you so much for your yeah. comments, sir. And Joel, mm -hmm. I'd just like for you to share with people how all this started because you suffered from PTSD. You lost a lot of weight. You were going to the doctors. You were getting a lot of wrong information. So I'm going to turn the stage over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, 2014, I started to get sick. 2015, I was uh, reaching out to the VA and I got down to 135, 137 pounds. And they said it was in my head. I was okay, quit stressing. I need to eat more. And my mom had to move in and feed me by hand to keep me alive. Mm -hmm. While she moved in, she let me know that during the first three years of my life, family and friends had to donate blood to keep me alive. Four and a half years old, I was put on Ritalin. Five years old, I was put on Siler. So mm. this is part of the reason I call myself a professional patient. In 2015, when I was going through this, I broke away from the Veterans Administration Hospital and I got to Whole Foods, Natural Foods. And the people around there started to help me integrate natural foods. And then they told me, hey, you're gonna die if you don't get to a natural doctor, if you don't get to what they called a DO. I didn't even know what a DO was at that time. Hmm. So I looked in a Healthy Beginnings magazine and in the back, I found Dr. William Clearfield of the Clearfield Medical Group. And I came to him <clears throat> and after being with the Veterans Hospital since 1990, you can imagine how hard that was. 
Mm-hmm. So we did our labs. Yeah. And within about seven days, I got my labs back and I found out my testosterone was extremely low, dangerously low. So mm-hmm. he had given me a shot that day. And some of the people I knew said they could see the color. They literally could see the color back in me because I was sickly. I was very sickly. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> a little bit later, he starts working acupuncture on me. And we started dealing with the anxiety because when I was so sick, I couldn't even breathe. I had to count mm. sheep to keep on par to breathe. It was really bad. It was really bad. And I didn't want to go back to the VA. <clears throat> I had a private doctor now. Why would I need to go back to the VA? Mm-hmm. I was with a Vietnam vet at Tandy Leather. And he mentioned mm. Carrie Fritz at the VA hospital. And she's in charge of the um, leather to, leather class part of the recreational department and we also have guitar we have art we have kayaking um the reno veteran photography group and this led me down a whole path of medicine you know recreational therapy physical therapy acupuncture chiropractic naturopathic hemeopathic osteopathic yes and i started to realize the difference between conventional medicine and traditional medicine Mm. traditional medicine got wiped out per se almost by the rockefellers who took over the american medical association Mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why 10 to 12 percent of doctors in america belong to the american medical association a lot of them don't want to belong to it no more because there's this huge pharmaceutical influence going on in our country Mm -hmm. in nih and with our colleges and mm-hmm. with our medical yes. magazines. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the sickness is deep. And when I started yeah. to get to these naturopathic and hemeopathic and osteopathic doctors and speaking with them and going to their conventions, I started to learn about the truth and how they're actually healing people. Mm. And you know how we're not supposed to say cure. Well, these people do heal you to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. And I call stabilize like PTSD. You can stabilize PTSD. And we believe that a huge stem and process of PTSD is from traumatic brain injury. Mm-hmm. You've got micro abrasions and macro abrasions. Right. Macro right. abrasions can happen from explosions. Micro abrasions can actually happen from thought. thought trauma. Like someone mm-hmm. holding a gun to your head and they pull the trigger, but it doesn't go off. You You could have heard it or you thought it. And that right. creates trauma. These are those little hmm. stages of trauma that are actually big in the head, in the mind. And yeah. it, your brain suffers damage and your hmm. mind interprets it. That's why I yeah. started to realize the difference between physical sickness compared to mental sickness. You hmm. have your gut yes. and your heart, which sends signals to your brain. <clears throat> and your mind interprets that. So hmm. when you take care of your gut and you take care of your heart, And you do that through a community. You do that through your churches or your religion. You do that through art. You do that through physical movement and exercise. Hiking trails. Mm -hmm. That's how you heal. This is how we do solutions on suicide. Mm -hmm. So you tired of the term prevention and awareness. Yeah. So you find an outlet there that's comforting and soothing and healing to your spirit, regardless what it is. It makes sense. And when you talked about the brain traumas and all that, that's what Mark suffered from. He had chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is referred to as CTE, concussions, because he had he had buku of them. Uh, he used to play football, and him and Emmett Smith were on the same football team in high school. And Mark went on to, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Florida State. And that's wow. where he injured his knee and could no longer play football. And Emmett went on to, um, you know, of course, to the Cowboys and everything. But um, that type of injury. And then when you were talking about when someone holds a gun to your head and pulls the trigger and it clicks, but it doesn't go off, the micro trauma. Yes. I, I, I never heard that before, but it makes perfect sense, doesn't it, Tamara? Yeah. Well, the body and the memory, we're, we're they're coexisting, right? I mean, the body Mm -hmm. is the vessel, the spirit lives within, the memory is what is experienced and and records the memory into the body. So Mm -hmm. they're all 
if we don't treat them as one unit and celebrate them individually for how they interact, we are always going to leave a peg out if we Mm. do that. So we have to incorporate all of it. So I love when you talk about, it's not just about eating right. It's not just about exercise. It's not just about tracking your hormones. It's all of it. Mm -hmm. It's also becoming aware of your emotions and what you're feeling. I love what you said earlier before we even started about e-motion being energy in motion. Love Mm. that, that you said that that's something that's being preached now by, um, who did you say? Tony Robbins. Tony Tony Robbins Robbins is using that. It's kind of funny because that is something that's actually been said for years. That's actually a very old but he's starting to use it, which I love because Mm -hmm. the truth is if we do not monitor or become aware of our out of control emotions, they run our show. And so when you talk about trauma, microscopic trauma, that is that, that is PTSD at any level. You don't have to be just in combat or you don't have to just be a first responder. These are children like going to school and being bullied are experiencing these kinds of trauma. Um, As a parent, I see Mm -hmm. my children going through this all the time and uh, giving them coping skills and allowing them to feel their feelings. Absolutely. So I totally love Mm. that you're bringing attention to this because there is no one fix all. It's all these different approaches that need to be addressed. And I love the fact too, that your answer in dealing with all these things to keep your mind, your heart, your gut, your body, everything in harmony, you cannot find it in one pill bottle or two pill bottles. It does not exist. I I really appreciate you. Balance it all. Mm -hmm. If you think you're going to go to a psychiatrist and a psychologist and drive home and eat at McDonald's and then go watch the news, yeah, you're going to be in trouble. And when you Mm -hmm. were talking about combat, Everybody, a lot of people have this perception that PTSD is combat related. And as part Mm -hmm. of the reason I got into this aspect is because 60 plus percent of the veterans coming back from war Mm -hmm. aren't combat. Mm -hmm. They're experiencing PTSD. They're experiencing depression. They're experiencing anxiety. They're experiencing these anger outbursts and these emotional outbursts. And what Mm -hmm. you were talking about, memory childhood memory there's a story about a little girl that received a heart transplant and the heart transplant went real well but she started to have nightmares horrific nightmares and no one could figure it out the psychiatrist psychologist doctors so they finally got a forensic artist to paint who and what she was seeing and then they had found out that who she was seeing was a gentleman that had raped and murdered a little girl in the woods And so they went and they caught that gentleman. And that's the type of memory. The nearites in your heart Mm -hmm. have memory. So nearites in our hearts have memory from our past. So Mm. a lot of experiences in war can bring up past, can bring up smells. And then you come back here and you have PTSD and we're being told, you know, you're stressed out and it's your fault and it's your family's fault. It's your community's fault. And it has nothing to do with poisons or toxins or horrific food or pills or bad vaccines Mm -hmm. or electromagnetic frequencies. But it has Mm. to do with all of the above. And we got to get away from just thinking you're going to go take a pill and see a psychiatrist or psychologist. It's almost better to go see physical therapists, recreational therapists, go see a church, go see your community, go see your DAV, go see your veteran group, go see your veteran family and get integrated again. This Mm. is how we're going to be solving this suicide. And that's what I just talked to these doctors about. Doctors, we believe, are killing themselves at 40 per 100,000. Veterans are at 30 per 100,000. And Mm. civilians are at around 13 to 15. And now our youth, 10 to 24, their number one cause of death, we believe, in America is suicide. It's horrible. They actually call themselves a suicide generation. A lot of them believe that they are the suicide generation. It's almost mm. they're pulling it forward. Yeah. As you were talking there, Joel, and I've listened to you on the radio show and I've known you for some time and of course hearing you right now. I imagine you were standing there in front of those doctors at that convention that you spoke at and you were talking to them the way you talk, you just shared with us in the numbers. I bet you had some eyeballs on you and some jaws drop open, huh? You know, I've spoken last year just before 
this latest flu epidemic happened, I was speaking at the pepper mill and I got second place out of 21 speakers. The first mm. place speaker was Monica Jane, who's also from our area and mm -hmm. she's a uh, sex therapist. So she got right. first, you know, I'm just saying <laughs> that's hard. Yeah. To talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. They know that I'm advocating for what I say, first, second and third responders. Your first response we know is law enforcement, firemen, and ambulance. But we don't talk about the second response, which is the emergency room doctors, doctors, nurses, the labs, and so forth that are there all night long. And then when you get out of the emergency room, you've got your third response, which could be Red Cross. It could be the counselors. It could be the social workers. It could be the schools, the art processes, your DAB, the VFW. The coaches. And your activists and your, mm -hmm. and your coaches, counselors, preachers, mm -hmm. those yeah, are your third responders. And and the Japanese mm -hmm. figured that out after the tsunamis and the hurricanes. They figured mm -hmm. out that most of their people were killing themselves in what we call the third response, which is mm -hmm. the emotional response. Yeah, It's crazy. I served at the same time in the same place. I did not know her then. Uh, she was a surgical nurse in Tainan. We were together in Tainan in wow. 69 and 70, and I never knew her, like I said. But she shared with me, we, we found each other years later. And when I say found each other, you know, we were just in the same area. She says there was many, many, many times that I would go in and take a shower, and I wouldn't need any water at all from the tears that flowed out of my eyes. Yeah. And I didn't even know what to say to her. I just kind of like, wow, it took me back. I mean, because you can imagine the trauma they saw there in the surgical rooms, people you know, being brought in, blown to bits and things like that. It's horrible. Yeah. It's yeah. very horrible. It scars the mind big time, you know. It's emotional. It's very emotional. Oh, and people yeah. ask me all the time, how do I deal in suicide all the time? And Dr. Clearfield told me don't do it. He's like, are you crazy? But when I started to go to the VA without anybody's permission, <clears throat> mm -hmm. the director started to notice. And she's yeah. like, hey, we're going to have to put you as a volunteer. So she literally put me under the director's office as an unaffiliated volunteer because I started to show up. Mm -hmm. That's where I started to realize that a lot of the employees yeah. were also sick. And a lot of the wow. veterans were also sick. And then they started to trust me and they knew I was under the director's office. And they're like, you know what? They started complaining about all the stuff that the director's doing wrong, all the bad stuff with the VA. And I came to Doc and I was like, this is getting a little heavy. This is getting a little overwhelming. What should I do? And he said, and I quote, don't be a politician. He said, <laughs> yeah, right. Fix it. Don't complain. Go fix it. There you, you know? go. And he's a genius. And I'm thinking, man, how am I going to fix suicide? Really? That's where I came on the term Talk solutions about it. and suicide, solving suicide. We started mm -hmm. this in 58. I believe 94, 96, the United Nations came to Reno, Nevada, and they came up with the term awareness. So for all these years now, decades, it's all been about prevention and awareness. It's like, no, we're America. Let's solve this. Let's fix it. Let's mm -hmm. really come up with solutions and let's provide the truth mm -hmm. about why this is happening. And let's mm. give people an avenue to talk to coaches, to counselors, to entrepreneurs, to DAV, to VFW. Don't yeah. just think you got to go to psychiatry and psychology and get a pill because <laughs> then you think it's in your head. You don't mm -hmm. think it's in your gut and your heart and your experiences. And you don't believe that it's fixable. And I want to provide that hope that we can solve this. It's yes. doable. Well, I'm right there with you. My belief is that nothing's happening to you. It's happening for you. So how do you wrap your brain around why it's happening in order for you to take advantage of the opportunity? Because right. the truth is these traumas, they are traumatic to redirect your attention and pull you into more awareness, more greatness. So if you pull from that understanding you can create more empathy and compassion. And that's one small component. You can recognize how you're treating your body. You can recognize how you're treating your spirit and start to shift from there. But you're absolutely right. It does not help if you're minimized or avoidant or not having those conversations because if you don't talk or share, nobody knows you're in pain. So it has to start with the verbal. 
And I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying don't go to a psychiatrist, don't go to a psychologist. Marissa Peer is a specialist out of the UK who believes mm-hmm. in rapid transformational therapy. One, two, mm-hmm. three, six visits. She mm-hmm. believes in possibly medicating during the trauma time frame, the first month that it happens, the first few months that it happens, the first half year of the year, they take care of you when you're in combat or you're in war and you come back here. Interesting. You still might need to be medicated to sleep. So I'm not saying don't do that, but it's a super fine balance. You have to do it all. Yes, you do. It's a starting point. You have to start somewhere. Yes. But do you have a roadmap for people to follow? So like they're suffering, they know they're in pain, they don't really want to talk about it because a lot of my PTSD folks, they, the last thing they want to do is pull those memories forward because that re, you know, that's where they feel it in the body, right? Because you start talking yeah. about it and then it re- reinvents itself. So do you have a roadmap that you suggest people to go through before they? So, I don't have a written one. Half my coaches and mentors want me to get that situated. The course is pretty <laughs> But my process is if you're suicidal, okay, then who you have in place right now is not quite working. So the labs Mm -hmm. you're dealing with at the hospital or your doctor aren't showing everything you need. So you need a second opinion. It, It starts with the labs. If you have suicidal ideation, your law enforcement, you're a doctor, you're a veteran, you're active duty, you're highly professional. You shouldn't. It's not normal. It's not natural. Something's no. wrong. And then mm. that, as you're also starting- recognize, also recognize that those medications could be causing those suicidal thoughts. Yes. A lot of people yeah. don't realize the medication they're on may not work with their body, and it may be actually planting a lot of those thoughts. Thank it's you. Just crazy. Mm. Yeah. Using your computer screens and your iPhones and being amongst a yeah. lot of electromagnetic yeah. frequencies. Mm. A lot of us are sensitive to that stuff. Yes. Yeah. We don't get the proper air, the proper hydration. Our cells so true. are made up of oxygen, water, and waste elimination. Mm-hmm. So if right. you take care of your oxygen and you take care of your water, you calm down, you breathe. If you're starting to freak out in a crowd, catch it breathe realize you're okay mm-hmm. rewrite away, rewrite out. some of that belief yeah yes. gotta do exposure the amygdala is triggered for yeah. a reason you gotta rewrite yeah. it and yeah. then we- the second path is to go ahead and sit down and try to figure out what you liked in your youth what were your hobbies what were you fun what what did you have fun in did you like to do photography did you like to play sports yeah something to get you out of your your veteran status back in that play mode so you can be expansive and creative yes absolutely and And volunteering and giving back yeah oh yeah doctor you doctors can work all day i'm talking 12 14 16 hours there's one of them here right now and they'll go home and they might have a beer or wine or they might just watch their tv or whatever he taught me that he goes dancing he forces himself to go out he forces himself mm. to go see his family in a, uh, every few mm. months. You know, mm-hmm. he he makes himself have fun to handle this amount of mm. stress. And we got to yeah. do the same thing. We really mm. do. We had Dr. Grant on a couple of weeks ago, Dr. George Grant. He's uh, He was wonderful sense of humor. But one of the things he stressed was that people do not breathe properly and they do not drink enough water. No, and they that shallow is, breathe, fear breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Fear fear breathing, rapid fear breathing. Yeah. 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 And uh, of course, not drinking enough water. He said, I think he said we were 73% water or something like that. Mainly, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he was talking about the the natural stuff and all that. And uh, academyofwellness.com is his website, academyofwellness.com. And we've got another comment here. Let me pop on that and see. Okay, Gordon. Many of those drugs are black box warning drugs that have suicide identification yeah, only. At, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's how true. many times have we joked about when you get to, you, know, you go to the doctor and you get medication? I guess we all have. And you start reading about the side effects and the side like, effects are probably worse. <laughs> yeah, the side effects are worse than why you went there in the first place. <laughs> yeah, so true. Well, you know, and what's so hard is this is what's hard for family to spot this. 
our bodies naturally mm-hmm. compensate for no matter what is happening. I'm also under the impression mm-hmm. that autoimmune disease is your body is lacking in something. We believe yeah. it's lacking in enkephalins and endorphins. But a mm-hmm. lot of people believe that when they have autoimmune disease, their body is attacking yourself. You've got to yes. be really careful at your word and what you perceive and believe. I believe our mm-hmm. body is trying to fix itself and it naturally is able to. So when it's you communicating. you're being attacked, you're mm-hmm. being attacked and you're dying. Yeah. It's like yeah. genetic, treatment resistant. You know, mm-hmm. it's in the family. It's like complex PTSD compared to what? Basic PTSD or soft right. PTSD right. or normal PTSD. <laughs> Come on now. You've mm-hmm. really got to be careful of your words. Another thing that Tony yeah. Robbins teach in his high level coaching processes, you've got to be careful with your words, your perceptions and your beliefs. Cause then you start to really believe that you're sick, you're sick, you're sick. It's like, mm-hmm. it's almost like the media pointing this big old huge red United States up on the media saying, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. That's well, our it's funny. Our belief and it's happening. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's well, you sick. even see it in some of the more mild things. Like people talk about depression. There's depression, and then there's clinical depression. There's Amen. really no difference. Um, no. You're still. It's a lack of expression, and it needs to be addressed. Now the body's starting to behave depressed. Yes. And we believe so, that depression is stemming from hormones per se, and mm-hmm. possible mm-hmm. allergies. You have you you have sensitivities. You have a allergies. State. And you have anaphylactic shock. So mm-hmm. people think it's clinical or genetic. And so you have permanent depression. You have permanent PTSD. You're going to be this way the rest of your life. So why would you want to be? Boom. And it's like, no, we can fix yeah. this. We're America. We have solutions. You yes. have to find hope somehow. You just do. You have to give. And we're also to- social creatures. you got to get around other people who can help you get from where you are to where you want to be and help you in, in your hour of need. Uh, That's one of the things that, yeah. Yeah. We're the only creatures on earth that have to rely on other humans to stay alive Mm -hmm. when we're first born. Yeah. It's like I was, go ahead. I was was going to say, excuse me. Do you, um, have you done any research in comparison from country to country? Cause it's really interesting to me to know, like culturally, I almost feel like as Americans, we wear some of these labels as badges of honor. Mm -hmm. Um, And I wonder in other cultures, do they carry on, and I don't mean to be extreme about this, but do they Mm -hmm. voice it such to the same discretion or do they maybe call it something different or maybe they behave Mm -hmm. it differently? Um, And, you know, just kind of curious what kind of research you've done around that issue to see if there's, is it, is it more of an American thing or is it, you know, worldwide? Wow, that's, you know, that's really, that's an outstanding question. The only research I've done is, quote unquote, in relationship to vaccines, because right. a lot of militaries from other countries did not take our vaccines. Right. And right. ironically, they're not succumbing to suicide like we are. They're not succumbing to sickness like we mm. are. But yeah. suicide, we estimate, is 800 million worldwide so it's really huge and yeah. we know the numbers are wrong okay mm-hmm. it's just like the numbers for veterans we that's part of where i started to get onto this was i learned at 22 we're succumbing to suicide every day mm-hmm. now the va and the dod and the veterans hospital they believe it's 17 but one out of four veterans uses the veteran hospital Okay, and right. maybe, maybe 30, 40 percent, up to possibly 50 percent uses the Veteran Administration for voc rehab or um, for benefits and so forth, but they don't really use the hospital. So I don't know a single veteran yet that has been given a suicide questionnaire. I haven't met one yet. So yeah. I believe these numbers are awfully wrong. And if we go by their numbers, we're talking mm-hmm. 114 to 144,000 veterans now, mm. men and women, have to succumb to suicide in 20 years of war. Mm. Vietnam, we lost, we believe, 56,000. Okay? Yes. So that gives you an idea. 
And so if you really yeah. put this into perspective, we could definitely be 150 to 200,000 veterans have now succumbed to suicide in 20 oh, yeah. years of war. And we've also yeah, be- lost seven and a half million veterans in 20 years. So mm-hmm. there's some sickness going on with our mm. military and our veterans. And, you know, when we were, you know, I came back in Vietnam in 1970 and we were kind of like looked upon like, what, it's your problem. You know, right. what's wrong with you? And uh, we were, you know, we were labeled with all the labels and I'm not getting into all that. But I mean, uh, it was just, you know, like, you know, we were just, it was our fault our problem and deal with it. Right. And uh, I'll tell you truthfully, uh, when I went home to my home in North Carolina, my, my hometown of Shelby, uh, I was treated great there by my family and friends. Right. The people who, the people who didn't want anything to do with me was the United States army. When I got sent out to Fort Huachuca, Arizona, they saw me at the combat patch on my right shoulder. Yeah, Timmer. And they thought that, oh, this guy's either a wacko, a dope addict, a you know, psycho or something. And I'm, you know, right. and I remember sitting there, and the, the sad part was I was like a man on an island. No one would talk to me because right. even when basic trainees go into the military recruits, they got other recruits in the same boots. <laughs> I was like a man on an island. And so for many years, that's why I just said, hey, you wow. know, get out of my face and walk on, you know. And it, it made me tougher, you know. But mm. uh, it's not an easy road to hoe. I can guarantee you that one. Wow. <laughs> that's why I drank so much in the 70s. And I quit cold turkey January the 1st, 1981. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and I tease people. I tell them, yeah, when I quit drinking, Budweiser got mad at me because their stock fell overnight. <laughs> but you got to have a sense of humor. I mean, that's one thing that uh, they can't. And oh, my goodness, we got a whole bunch of messages here. Do you see those on the side there, Tamara? Can you click on messages? Oh, Do you see them? Let me see. Oh, my goodness. I have you guys full screen. No, I don't see the messages because I'm not inside. You oh, you're not? To... Okay. Okay. No, because I don't me... want it to echo on me. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me take it from the top here. Um, I'm going to mispronounce some names. I'm real good oh, at that. I, I can do, that. do that. Yeah, just click on. You see it now? Now I see it. Holy cow. Look at all that. That's yeah. kind of fun, guys. <laughs> hey, go right ahead. You, I'll give you Where my Where did blessings. you leave off, though? With uh, Gordon Brown. Many of the drugs um, with about the black box. And you got a uh, guy want to say hi to Joel. That was uh, Usman. M A H I D A Mahida. I probably wow. mispronounced that. Angel Hill says, fantastic interview. I know she's talking about Joel there. Excellent. And Ann cool. Richardson, Joel, you are so handsome. I mean, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'll take and that. Ann Richardson, you know, she says, so sad. And she is so correct on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Angel Hill says, thank you for your work, Joel. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Gordon, he gives uh, a website there, TV. FAZ.org forward slash suicide dash counter. Nice. And then uh, let's see who else, who else, who else, who else, who else. I agree with Ann saying that there's not enough support for the veterans. Thank you, Ann. I agree with you on that. Pick up on you that, know, please. Um, she's, she's correct. There, mm-hmm. But at the same time, it is. We have the mm-hmm. Veterans Prevents slash Reach panel. And if you go to their webpage, you could scroll. And you're going to find 30, Mm -hmm. 40 resources, NAMI and SAMHSA, NIH, uh, the suicide hotline, the veterans crisis hotline. And you got, but why isn't it working? Mm. Uh, Well, a lot of it's fear. It's fear that you're going to get called. It's fear that the cops are going to come to your home. It's fear that the medical boards are going to get a hold of you. It's fear. Not enough help. Yes. Not enough help because they're over inundated. I do. I feel like a lot of these facilities don't Mm -hmm. have the actual physical manpower or the finances to support the need. They do, though. They actually increased all the suicide hotline facilities nationwide. Mm -hmm. They can handle it. You can call them up. They're not going to call the cops right away. Doctor, doctors can call and police officers and law enforcement can call and it's going to be absolutely Mm -hmm. anonymous. Mm -hmm. There's mm-hmm. no reason to not reach out. You can call and just talk to them because you're sad. I, I just want to respond to Angel Hill's comment. She says, please share this valuable interview out of your Facebook. This subject matters, and you're absolutely the cor- correct. Tonight, Angel, we will download the show, and we will upload it 
to YouTube on the messages of inspiration and hope on YouTube. And I will also send Joel a link of the YouTube video. That way he's got it. And uh, yeah. please share it anywhere you'd like to, because this message is powerful. And Ann Richardson, often people look at substance abuse as a reason for suicide or mental health problems when, in fact, it's a symptom. She's right. Yeah. And we got some hearts for movement again. And Angel says, Joel B. Peterson has avid supporters in this world. He's doing a fantastic work. And brother, you know, and Angel, I couldn't agree with you more with Joel because and and Ann says, I feel Ann Richardson says, I feel it's something that politicians like to pretend they're doing something, something about, about in reality and help yeah. isn't there but isn't there there when it's needed it, but it isn't there excuse me when it's needed in the right way nowhere near enough help and that's because so, the veterans administration we're at a third tier you hear a lot about the house ways means committee that's the first tier then there's a second tier then we're down the third tier in other words veterans we're in we're in the cellar <laughs> Right. So if there's enough support out there, you're saying that there's enough support with the yes. res responses. What do you see as the problem? Where is the breakdown? I believe, it, I honestly believe we have over 45,000 veteran 501c3s. These are a lot of them are run by veterans and veterans, family members and suicide survivors. Do you think words just not getting out enough for people to no, know? I mean, no word, okay. word gets out, but I believe everybody still thinks it's mental. And they're going to be this way the rest of their life. So they're band-aiding or coping or strategizing of survival versus recovery. Versus or, realizing that you yeah. can fix slash solve your problem. Mm -hmm. Fixing your gut and fixing your heart, breathing mm -hmm. right and drinking right, mm -hmm. and getting to the right doctors, getting to the right hospital, getting to the right process. The government system is based on pills, based on mm -hmm. vaccines, based mm -hmm. on making money through these tests. That's why I advocate to break away from that system. If you have suicidal ideation and if you have to, if you can afford it, get to a private doctor, get to a private naturopath, a mm -hmm. private hemiopath, a private osteopath. They so what if they can't? What What's the option they have if they can't? I mean, not everyone lives in a city life where they can get access then they would have to, I believe you usually have to start with the endocrine system, your hormonal system, an endocrinologist. Mm -hmm. A lot of the hospitals are still late bloomers in relationship to your hormone system. And we mm -hmm. didn't really start studying this until the late 90s. I kid oh, you yeah. not. Your endocrine yeah. and your endocannabinoid system in connection to cannabinoids, CBD, mm -hmm. in connection mm -hmm. with THC. We now know how powerful that is, and we now know why the government patented it many, many decades ago. They knew. I'm not is that what the DO is? When you said earlier you went and saw a DO, is that more of an endocrinologist type, type doctor? Doctors, or? doctors of osteopathic medicine were mm -hmm. the original doctors many years ago, and then uh, Dr. Palmer <clears throat> broke off and became a chiropractor. But doctors mm -hmm. of osteopathic medicine, they're the doctors that go for 10 years, not six years. They're the mm -hmm. doctors that, as you can see behind me, they use supplements. This is Dr. Clearfield's little supplement room back here. This is how he, he likes to fix people with supplements first. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. then if we have to go to medications, we will. But we try mm -hmm. with food and supplements first yeah. so a doctor of osteopathic medicine also can do manipulation and they mm. usually go to school for 10 years so mm -hmm. when people can't find solutions with their regular hospitals and their what i call an allopathic regular medical doctor they usually end up with the do mm -hmm. gotcha it's powerful yeah it's amazing because i did study into the world of herbs for about 10 years and natural cures and all that and what i found ironic was that the father of modern medicine, Hippocrates, he argued with some other men of that time who were medical men. And he, he says, we've got everything that we need naturally. He was right. against going the, you know, let's create our own drugs. And he was against that. And yet what the doctors take when they graduate, they take the Hippocratic Oath. I think that's so, so ironic. ironic. It yeah, is. yeah. I mean, because he was staunch against it, 100%.
Yeah, it's interesting. T.T. Yeah. Still, yeah. Still's the father of osteopathic medicine, and he mm. was the same way. He, yeah. he, he believed you have to go naturally. Use your oh, food, yeah. use your plants, yeah. use your body, use your spirit, use your energy. Do all that first. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, even in, uh, in, you know, Hippocrates, uh, he, he referred to, he says, even in the word of God, it says, I've given you everything you needed. And that took me on a trip. And I found in the you know, very first book, very first chapter, last few verses, I've given you everything you need in the, the seed of the plant and, you know, the, the vegetation, you know, everything that you need. That's a promise. And uh, so that's the owner's manual. So who are you going to call? Some shade tree mechanic? <laughs> right. Shade tree mechanic. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, if you if you had, if you bought a real nice expensive sports car and you would you drive it down and get some you know guy that works in a garage, then he on the place, give you his opinion on what how, what kind of maintenance you should pull on it. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and your body is so much more important and, and valuable than yeah. that. Yeah. So true. Correct. Mm. Amen. Angel says she 100% concurs with all your statements, Joel. You got a fan there. You know that? Thank you yeah. very much, Angel. Yeah. Yeah. You you know Angel Hill? I sure do. Good, She's good. The good. Uh, people that's in the arena with Tony Robbins oh. and one of the people that helps coaches me. Okay. She uh, wanted to ask you a question, Joel. I, I overlooked okay. that. I'm sorry. Someone who doesn't know how to access this type of care, get doctors to cooperate in looking for endo, what's that big word, endo system? Endocrinologist. In, yeah. yeah. Thank you. you can I get my for an endo, you can ask for an endocrinologist, like you were saying, Tamara, at your hospital. Okay. Uh, in fact, I've got a 24-year-old veteran right now and his wife. They're asking for help at the VA hospital, and the VA is acting like they're searching for drugs. And I mm. told him to go back and to ask for specific, specificity into the endocrinologist. Ask for his Specifics. endo, or if he doesn't have an endocrinologist, ask for one and ask for his estrogen, estradiol, and testosterone to be measured specifically. And then you have a ratio from about 225 all the way up to 925. So let's say you're sitting at home, you're disabled per se, as compared to being a police officer or a doctor, who do you think should be higher in their testosterone? So you're mm. going to your level of testosterone, but if you're above 225, we believe you're in danger. And we believe that heart attacks happen traumatically in relationship to your level of testosterone. Mm -hmm. And older men over the ages of usually 70, 75, they're one of the top age groups to succumb to suicide. And we believe it's because of a massive amount of lowerage into your testosterone. Mm -hmm. Tost low mm -hmm. testosterone causes depression, we believe. Traumatic. Absolutely. Price. It's about the yeah. hormones. It's about, you, you know, know, walking and so I've forth. never been a suicidal thought person until recently when I um, tapped out of testosterone. Believe it or not, women have testosterone too. Yes, so mm -hmm. it is fascinating because I couldn't understand where that was coming from and why that was happening as I'm aging. And all of a sudden I got scared. It's like, I've never, I've always been optimistic and positive and, you know, what an intense ride that is. You, it's like a light, it's like a switch. It just all of a sudden happens. It's not like you have no forewarning or fatigue necessarily. I mean, I'm a, I'm a doer. So I go, 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 go. And I had no idea I was in that, in that space no. until all of a sudden those thoughts came in, which is really intense. And what you were talking about earlier, perceptions and beliefs, that's another perception yes. and belief. Women go <laughs> hormonal, right? Not yep. men. No, no. Us men don't go hormonal. Then why are we 75% of suicides? Right. Hormones. Right. Yeah. Hormones. We go hormonal. Just when our estrogen, when our hormone, when our testosterone is low, our estrogen is usually high. Exactly. When our estrogen is high, we get depressed and we get crying. We start to cry a lot. Get the emotions. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, yep. yep. you, you lose your strength. You lose your vitality. Yeah. You lose yep. your energy. You know, your emotions. So your energy in motion, your emotions are now shot. Now you start to feel weak. People don't perceive it or see it. You start to think you're weak and you're physically sick. You're mm -hmm. physically sick. That's the secret. We've got mm -hmm. to start changing the perception 
that suicidal ideation, depression, and anxiety is mental, is physical. Fix what's physical. And if they can't figure it out, keep going, keep trying. You yeah. will figure it out when you get to the right doctor. Mm. I don't know what else to say. That uh, That's what I've And seen. don't give up. Don't give up on the first no. one because I've gone mm-hmm. through a couple of doctors trying Maybe. to figure this out. Likewise. And I will mm-hmm. tell you the process isn't simple. Most no. doctors take a high level blood test and, and blood tests are just a stamp in time where you were yesterday when they took the blood, <laughs> you know? Right. So you're constantly changing every day. And it is amazing to me how um, you know, you can take that blood work from one doctor to the next and they'll say, well, that's not, that's not blood work. I can't read anything from that. So how yeah. is one doctor going to be able to tell you what's going on? There's these, um, I'm, there's such a deep level of tests that can be done outside of the blood work, the saliva yeah. and the urine testing and all the, mm. the whole gamut. You should have the full, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling out of sorts, I would start there. Don't let it go too far into a depressed state or suicidal state because that is, I truly agree with you. It's not always from the initial thought. They both can go either direction. It can be hormonal, but it can also be a, a belief system that's stuck that's starting to cause you to eat differently, which impacts your hormones. It can go in any direction. And that's, Agreed. I think, something that people don't realize is behavior does have a lot to do with the way you feel. Behavior mm-hmm. has a lot to do with the way your body feels. So right. it's it's knowing, you don't know which one happened first, and that's not the point. The point is that all of them need to be adjusted and need to be mm-hmm. modified accordingly. Agreed. So, it could yeah. be, you could have small fatty tumors that are blocking. You could have scars. Yeah. You could have injuries you don't know about. Oh, yeah. Blockages. Um, it's not just hormones, but it's, mm-hmm. it's tiny. So and I'm not talking things. about some of the people mm-hmm. that have real hardcore psychosis or yeah. hardcore damage <clears throat> to the brain. There is a difference yeah. between the brain and the mind. Mm-hmm. So yes, there is. No, we got to mm-hmm. keep all that in perspective. That's why I don't go against allopathic doctors. Mm-hmm. I believe mm-hmm. that the allopaths and the osteopaths, after all this, they know it's time to come together. We know this yeah. for a fact, mm-hmm. but pharmacological mm-hmm. corporations are running a lot of those processes and they run a lot yeah. of those medical board exam yeah. boards and those processes that come down that says you have to vaccinate at this age you have yeah. to medicate this way mm-hmm. no the private doctors don't yeah and they have dramatically improved health processes for those of us that are very very sick mm-hmm. it's absolutely amazing yeah. and i'm not talking about rich people I'm not right. talking about DNA or genetic testing. If you're at a regular hospital, you just have to know the names of some of these tests. And if they say no, you can go online. There's now companies mm-hmm. online that'll do these hormonal tests. It is expensive, mm-hmm. some of them, but you've got to get the basic levels and keep trying. And if you don't know, reach out to people like myself, reach out to some mm-hmm. of your counselors, and some of your advocate or activist in your town, there's people mm-hmm. that do this for a living. It's what we love to mm-hmm. do. Yeah. You know, Joel, uh, I didn't even stop for any commercial breaks because of the fact the information you're putting out was too valuable. So folks, uh, to appreciate that, just go to six minute webinar.com and buy everything on the page and they'll call it even. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just teasing with you, but no, we did well, not want to break, but I want to say, uh, for those of you that would like to get in touch with Tamara, visit Tamara at TamaraBlanketShip.com. Her email address is Tamara at TamaraBlanketShip.com. And Joel, you're the main man, my man. You're on LinkedIn. Just go to, you know, look for on LinkedIn, Joel B. Peterson. As you see there, I copied his exact uh, uh, address there and pasted it. Also, his email is Joel at six seven at gmail.com and we got a bunch of comments up there you want to click on those and read those for us tamar <laughs> oh of course you're gonna make me switch screens <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> awesome okay let's see excellent presentation yes uh, where did you leave off unfortunately uh let's see let me get back up here i'm where going back up uh i think i left off somewhere where um Ann Richardson says, agree with Tamara. 
Yeah, I agree. She agreed with you on that uh, testosterone. It's a huge issue. Got to stay okay. in balance. Yeah, hormones are responsible for so much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, consider myself a peer of Joel. <laughs> like, yeah. That was from Angel. Yeah. So cute. Angel. Community That's sweet. is important. Yeah. Community is um, important. Scroll down some. Wise words, Ann said. Some, so Ann also said some doctors are totally closed to the um, the issues, though. Yeah, they're, that's true. They're, they're too... They're not open because they've been trained in such a way that they aren't, they're, they're trained more from that pharmaceutical perspective. And it is, mm -hmm. yes. it yes. is a very big issue. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, we should test people more that, you know, um, when they are not feeling well, clinical depression, anxiety state. Yeah. We talked about that. I totally agree. Uh, it's, it's really, you guys are so amazing. There's so much going on in here. It's kind of fun. She said, mm -hmm. you rock. <laughs> and and <Richardson>. Anne, <laughs> uh, 100 percent agree. Well, Linda posted. Community is everything. People, mm -hmm. Moral of the story is people got to get to people like myself or people like you, Tamara, or the coaches that are out there. There's thousands of us coaches and consultants out here now that want to help people out there. We really do. So you just got to find those avenues. You got to find those groups on social media you've got to find the group you've got to find the big brother big sisters out in town especially our yeah. youth you've got to you can go if, even if you're not religious go to your church and your church might know of those facilitators or those advocates it's or community yeah yeah you get connected it's, it's huge it's you sometimes you've got to go yeah. places that are uncomfortable and put away the the belief systems and go and connect with community because an organization right. like that is is just a, a bunch of like-minded people coming together over one cause or one thought. You might find an opportunity right. there to help you bridge your confusion. So it's, mm. yeah. We need, and I believe we need our I mean, veterans. no limits nowadays. Absolutely. Our VFWs, our DAVs, our AMBETs, our American Legions, our USO, I believe our mm -hmm. Rotary Clubs, our Elks Clubs, our Shriners Clubs, mm -hmm. I believe they need to start organizing and connecting together. I believe yeah. we yes. need these big, huge communities to start connecting together. And it's mm -hmm. time for our country to start coming together. We've been fractured and fighting way. It's all mm. black, white, it's all female, yeah. male, Republican, yeah. Democrat. Yeah. We're Americans, and we need that back. Yes, we just do. It's it's. And one of the things that some of these uh, clubs need to do, they need to be able to reach out to the younger people because a lot of these clubs, I've I've seen them, and I actually told one uh, guy there, I says your biggest problem, the reason why you can't attract uh, you know younger people in their thirties and forties that want to give back to their community is it's like an old boys club. I says yeah. to be honest with you. You're it's old, intimidating. you're, yeah, you're old, you're pale and you're stale. <laughs> and I don't think he appreciated that, but I mean, I just, you know, right down the middle, you know? No, well, I think that I think there's a great opportunity there. Don't you think? I mean, just because yeah. that culture and that old community, we forget about how wise the wisdom that you guys have collected. I feel like there's a, mm. just a missed opportunity there. We I should agree. be mixing our old and our young together yeah. and help them expand. We got one minute left, and I want to leave that minute for Joel. Let him yes. share anything he wants to in closing comments, ladies and gentlemen. I do believe suicidal ideation, depression, and anxiety is physical. Mm. And when you see suicidal ideation <clears throat> as a cancer, and that your family members, your friends, your veteran, your brothers, your sisters succumbed to sickness, they didn't commit sickness. They succumbed to sickness. It's not your fault. They were mm -hmm. sick. That's the secret. So if you're sick now, fix it. Don't think it's in your head and you got to stay this way. There is hope. There's many of us out there that know how and want to fix this. Trust mm -hmm. that and believe in, I believe in God, believe in source, believe in energy, believe in something. It's out there. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's hope. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you for a wonderful show. And I tell you right now, Tamara, I wish every show had this much energy and much information that's going out to help people. 
And uh, Joel, I just got to salute you on your work, my brother. You're a former Marine. I'm proud of you. Huh? This old army guy is. <laughs> and uh, you know, if and I've seen you come a long, long, long in your growth. And uh, my goodness gracious, uh, I'm so proud of what you're doing because you're reaching out. You're gonna make you're gonna make a huge difference with a lot of people. That's your calling, brother. So eat your Wheaties, <laughs> pack your lunch, and you know make sure you got extra underwear in your bag, and because you're going yeah. on a trip, my man. Eat your plants and vegetables. Don't eat your Wheaties. We're done with that. <laughs> okay, okay. I was just checking to see if you were paying attention to what I was going to say. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, ladies Dr. and gentlemen, Dr. we've Dr. really Tom Allen says don't eat nothing from a package. There That's you right. go. Mother Nature's already yeah. packaged it. You don't need yeah. to do that. Right. Yeah, my food don't need no label, huh? Nope. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in today on behalf of Tamara Blankenship and, and Joel Peterson, myself, Jim Grant. We want to thank you for tuning in. Be sure and share this show with others. We're on the E360TV.com. Just scroll down the positive uh, vibrations, then go over to uh, Messages of Inspiration, Hope, and Support. And tonight we'll download this show and we'll upload it on YouTube. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you so much, folks, for your good comments. Thank you to all we'll see you out there watching and commenting. Thank yeah, you. Thank we'll you. see you later. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.